In this short video, we're going to develop a strategy for dividing algebraic fractions. So we may have learned in elementary school about dividing fractions. Dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. Now that's a pretty uh, simple phrase and you can learn it in a few minutes, but then you'll forget it right away. And, you know, it has words like reciprocal, which, what is reciprocal anyway? So we're going to try to develop a technique where we don't need, um, we still have a memory aid, but we don't need uh, this type of complicated phrasing. So if we just start with division of numbers, um, we can write the division using a division bar. And that's something that we want to get used to doing. And then we could change that division into a multiplication of two fractions. 6 divided by 2 is the same as 6 over 1 times 1 over 2. So, okay, here we see that we've dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, which is 1 half. And what if I take 6 and divide it by 1 third? Really, that says how many 1 thirds are in six holes. And so here are six holes divided up into thirds. And how many thirds are there? Well, three in each hole. There's six of them all together, so there's 18. So in other words, six divided by one third is the same as taking six times the reciprocal, and the reciprocal of one third is three over one. What if I'm dividing by two thirds? It's kind of the same idea. If you have six holes, how many portions of two-thirds can you get? And so I went ahead, and here's my six holes, and I went ahead and shaded groups of two-thirds with different colors so that, you know, we could actually count them. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine groups of two-thirds. And how can we get that without actually counting? Well, there's three-thirds in a whole, so we know there's 18-thirds all together. That's one-third. Well, how many groups of two-thirds? I'd have to take 18 and divide it by two. And that will give me nine. And so again, six divided by two-thirds is the same as, same as taking six times three. So that's the number of thirds in six and dividing it by two because we want groups of two thirds. So that's a good illustration of why we change division into multiplying by the reciprocal. But we'd like to have a nice memory aid so we don't have to remember about what thing gets flipped and the division bar is going to help us. If I take 6 divided by 2 thirds, that's the same as 6 over 1 divided by 2 thirds. And if I write this as a complex fraction, or re replace the division sign with a big division bar, I would have 6 over 1 over 2 over 3. And back in the day, I was taught that we had the innies and the outies. So the outer numbers in this big fraction, we call them outies. The innies are the inside numbers. And in order to evaluate this big fraction, we would take the product of the outies, they would go on top, and the product of the innies, they go on the bottom. And then we can factor and look for forms of 1, and we get our answer. 9 over 1, or just 9. And this works great when we have algebraic fractions. So I replace a division sign. If it's not already written with a big division bar, I rewrite it. And then I multiply the outies, put them on top, multiply the innies, put them on the bottom. Now I've just got a multiplication problem. So it's just like multiplying I'm going to go ahead and factor everything completely. And uh, I might have to 
think about that. Not the first one. Y squared minus 4Y uh, minus 12. That one is relatively easy. Um, the 2Y squared minus 8. First I take out the common factor and then I'm left with the difference of two squares. The 2Y cubed minus 8Y squared plus 8Y, it also has a common factor, so I can factor out the 2Y. And then Y squared minus 4 plus 4 is actually the square of a binomial, but we'll write it as Y minus 2 times Y minus 2, so we can see the forms of 1. And then uh, y cubed, 4y cubed minus 6y squared just has a common factor. And now, once we've got all of the factorizations, we are going to be looking for forms of 1. We'll divide those out. And what's left over is 1 times 1 times 1. y minus 6 times y minus 2 on top. And on the bottom, I'll just have 1 times 1 times 1 times 2y parentheses 2y minus 3. And I'll leave it there in factored form. So let's look at another example. It's already written using the division bar, so let's use the memory aid. And I'll factor everything completely. Uh, the numerator uh, does not require any further factorization, but in the denominator I need to think about uh, 3x squared minus 16x plus 5. Uh, to factor that, I'm going to look for a number, which or two numbers, that multiply to make 15 and add to make negative 16. Those numbers would be negative 15 and negative 1. So I'll replace the negative 16x with negative 15x and negative x, and then factor by grouping. And then for uh, 2x squared plus x minus 3, I'll do a similar process. I need two numbers that multiply to make negative 6. Remember, the way we got negative 6 is 2 times negative 3. And then the sum is going to be plus 1, because remember, plus x is the same as plus 1x. And those numbers are plus 3 and minus 2, so I'll replace the plus x with 3x minus 2x, factor by grouping. And now I'm ready to look for forms of 1. And it would seem that the forms of 1 are uh, x minus 5 over itself and x minus 1 over itself. And so remember that the numerator doesn't go away. It becomes 1, because now I have 1 times 1, and that's it in the numerator. So I have 1 over 3x minus 1, 2x plus 3.